Momentum Workflow Automation and Media Asset Management, Episode 2. At the end of our last episode, we saw that the workflow had delivered our task to this user action. The scenario here is that only content that has failed an automatic QC is given a manual oversight by an operator. This is one possible way of introducing efficiencies into a media workflow. Since last time, we can see that we now have two files waiting to be viewed. So how does this work in practice? Well, every time a task reaches this point, it means a human operator is introduced into this workflow. In Snell's experience, the human assessment of content is still highly valued by media companies, but momentum ensures that an operator's skills are always deployed at the correct stage of a workflow and for the same business-driven reasons each time. So let's see how this appears to our operator. I'll switch to the operator's task screen, which is called the to-do page. You can see here that we have the same two files that were visible within the workflow editor. As an operator, I can choose which one I want to view. And if I take one of these, I can make it my current task. You can see here that I have options for how the material should be categorised after I've reviewed it. So perhaps I might accept the material because in fact the auto QC had picked up on a large amount of still frames at the start of the material. As this is the bars and clock of the intro, this is fine. If there had been a freeze within the main content, we would have made a different decision. The report of the reasons for failure depends on exactly which third-party QC tool you're using, but the report can be accessed by the metadata fields that are configured to be visible here. As you probably realise, these actions I can choose from relate to the node in the workflow editor. We showed last time how easy it was to modify the workflow, but let's see another example. We could imagine a scenario where we might want to fix a QC failure in our edit suite, but because this is an expensive resource to our business, this must always be approved by a supervisor after it's flagged by an operator. So back in my workflow editor, I'm going to add a node here. which allows my operator to send that to the supervisor. So I'm going to add my supervisor's user action now. And you can see I'm going to assign that to the role of supervisor. So any users who have the role of supervisor will see this content in their task list, but importantly, it won't be in the operator's task list. And I'm going to give the responsibility to the supervisor to select which edit suite is going to process this. But we also need an option for no edit in case the operator has made a decision that does not warrant using the expensive resources of the edit suites. I'm going to add an email alert if we do need to alert the editors for new content, but the no edit is going to take us back to the original operator. Like that. So back to my operator's to-do page, and if I refresh the screen, you'll see we now have this additional option of supervisor. Simple report. To demonstrate what's happening in the workflow, we can now see the operator has posted that to the supervisor and it's now pending supervisor review. I'm going to log in to my supervisor's account 
He's called Sam. And here's that content. If I take it, these are the three options we just entered. I'm going to make the decision that an edit is not required. So I'm going to say no edit required. Let's take a look at the workflow. That's already immediately gone back to the main operator who could then review the notes given to him by the supervisor and the task will continue on in the normal predictable way. You can see that modifying this workflow was very simple to do, did not require any knowledge of programming or engineering support, just an understanding of the logical steps required for consistent processing of media. Since our human interactions are constrained within the managed workflow, it means all the processes are repeated in exactly the same way with predictable results each time. These to-do pages that we've been looking at have similarities to the catalogue page we saw briefly last time. But the difference is that here we only see specific media that requires our input at specified stages within a workflow. I'll switch to our catalogue view and we now have global access within definable constraints to all our media and it's not related to the workflow. We can, however, at any time choose to post any content into an entry point in our workflow for whichever ad hoc reasons we might find necessary. Send to, and I can post into a workflow. Other features we have in here include a list of all versions of the content and all its associated technical and descriptive metadata and the metadata fields are configurable and extendable. With all the processing of media that Momentum is responsible for, we're now able to provide media companies accurate usage statistics that cover their complete enterprise from one system instead of separate reports from the different devices. So next time we'll take a look at the business analytics side of the system and the benefits that this offers. Thank you for watching, see you next time.